also some sub amendments that were proposed to the amendment tabled by Mr. Sean Casey, and those sub amendments were adopted. So we are resuming the debate on the motion as amended. But first of all, I would like to recognize Mr. Gabriel St. Marie and Mr. Sean Casey. Mr. St. Marie, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Dubu. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you today. I would like to extend my greetings to you all. Mr. Chair, I recognize your great knowledge when it comes to moderating such committees with brilliance. I would like to speak about where we were on the 18th of March, on 18th of May, because we said we were talking about the Veteran Affairs and we were down to sub amendments. Of course, replacing my colleague, Luke Desley, I am supporting the motion as tabled. I find the amendment and sub amendment topics that could be interesting, but in my opinion, they kind of water down the substance of the motion that was tabled, which was clarifying the regulations. Why were the rules not followed till the very end? So in the amendment and sub-amendment, as I understand them, we are adding another topic. We are saying that we're interested in the time limits, but the objective of the motion as it stands is really to say that we'll be inviting people to come help us understand why the process was not followed. And that is the position of my party. So just like the position of my colleague, Mr. Ruk Delzele, I'll be supporting the motion, even though I find that the amendment adds sub amendment do not have their place here. So I will be rejecting the amendment and sub amendment. So that's my position. That is what I wanted to tell you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. St. Marie. Right now, I'll give the floor to Mr. Sean Casey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, a couple of things to start. First of all, the notice of meeting indicated that we'd be embarking on committee business today, which I took to mean the planning of future business. Um, there's been no motion presented to resume debate on any other motion. Um, so I think it's a, a bit presumptuous that we that we launched into that without the, the prerequisite required. Um, and gi and given that, um, I, I, I presume that, that that Mr. Richards would like to have the floor, um, and we'll all we're all really looking forward to what he has to say when he does have the floor. But right now he doesn't have the floor. Um, so with that. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I would move that we, given that um, the planning of future business is something that uh, is contemplated on the notice of motion, uh, on, the, uh, on the notice of meeting. Excuse me. Mr. Richards, point of order. So, Mr. Chair, my understanding uh, of the meeting, and I, I recognize the way the, way the notice read, uh, but all members of this committee will recall that uh, when we That's last not a point of order, that's it, debate. You know what, you would like to let me finish. Yeah, yeah. On what so the chair standing can, order? The yeah. chair, yeah. Will, yeah. chair will determine yeah. that, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, we had an agreement as a committee. We all agreed that we were going to finish the two things that we agreed we were going to finish. This is debate. And we were going to immediately you don't return have to this. Mr. Casey has indicated he's about to make a motion of yeah. some other kind. You, Chair, it's, had indicated yeah. at the start of the meeting that you, yeah, we were I going know. to discuss but this. I understand. I'm asking that you rule You're on talking we're over on no. everyone else, <laughs> including <coughs> the Chair. You the, don't have the floor. Excuse it's not me. A point of order. Please, I have the floor. please. Thank you. Okay, I give the floor to Mr. Casey because he didn't say anything about his motion yet. So I can presume that what he's going to do. So, chair, but. What, what, I'm asking, what I'm asking you to rule on is you had indicated at the top of the meeting yeah, that you were yeah. going to return to this. So I'm asking you to indicate, to rule on whether that is what we are on or not. Yeah, but let because me... Because otherwise, let Mr. Me, Casey will be able to move a motion. Yes. In, 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 the, despite the fact that you as chair have ruled yeah. otherwise. So please Mr. tell Richard, us if, if, your, yes. if your ruling is I, I, that we are on Mr. Richard, sorry, what we agreed sorry. to this committee. Mr. Richard, like I said, I don't know his intention, so let it, he has to finish and what we say. A, but point of, appel point of order. Thank, thank you, Mr. Dubu. 
I am not a regular member of this committee, but looking at the minutes of the 18th of March and the information you gave at the beginning of the committee meeting saying that we're resuming where we had left off, <laughs> that's not a point of order, says the chair. Mr. Sean Casey started speaking. Now we are going in all sorts of directions. Uh, they may have they may have just turned it on, but there was no interpretation there for for uh, that entire exchange. Wow. Okay. Let us check. We have the IT. Ms. Blaney, did you get interpretation? Yes, is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. Est-ce que on suspend ou uh, it, was, uh, it was working earlier when you were speaking. Okay, uh, so let, let, let's try right now. Do you but disons que je vais I'll speak in French. Can you hear the interpreter now? The interpreter is speaking. The interpreter is speaking in English. Very well. It seems to be working in the room, but not online. So I will check with the technicians. OK, it looks like it's working now. So the interpretation is going through. Uh, like I said, Let's go back to Sean Kissy. Sean Kissy, you have the floor, so we are listening to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, given that committee business is what's indicated on the notice of meeting, given that committee business um, affords us an opportunity to plan future business because we don't have anything planned for the rest of the calendar, at least in terms of nailing down what we're going to do, given that committee business is normally done in camera, I move that we, I, I move that we go into camera. Okay, so we have to take the vote. Well, first of all, do I have unanimous consent to go in camera? You certainly do not, because liberals cannot keep okay. their word. Well, so let's take the vote, please, Miss. Monsieur Griffier. Mr. Casey. In favor. Ms. Hefner. I am in favor of going in camera. Sorry, I didn't hear the terms of the vote. Mr. May. In favor. Mr. Miao. Yes. Ms. Damoff. Yes. Mr. Dobo. Against. Mr. Richards. Adamantly opposed. Monsieur, Monsieur Paulus. No. Monsieur Kitchen. Mr. Kitchen. No. Monsieur Saint Marie. Contre. Miss Blaney. No. Yes, five. Nays, six. Donc, la motion a donc été. The motion has been defeated, so we will continue our discussions on the amended motion as tabled by uh, Mr. Casey. Mr. Saint Marie spoke. Any other interventions? Yeah, an opponent order. Can you, uh, you had indicated that we're on an amendment by Mr. Casey. Can you indicate what the amendment is that we're actually debating then? Yeah, I'm gonna, first of all, I have to say that there was an amendment from Mr. Kissy, and there was a sub-amendment from Ms. Blaney and Mr. Sarai, and those sub-amendment was adopted. Yeah. Yeah, so would you like to? Yeah, if, if, if you could, Chair, if you could read uh, the amendment that we were debating. Okay. Well, for the benefit of all, in English first, 
Schenkesi move that the motion be amended by adding after paragraph D the following E that the committee write a letter to the National Capital Commission, NCC, in regards to the role in the construction of the National Monument of Canada's mission in Afghanistan to assure the committee that the project will respect established deadlines and that Afghanistan war veterans who wish to see the monument built quickly will not experience additional delays. That's the motion that we are talking about. Just for clarification, so this, this is being added where? Excuse me? This is, I'm not, I don't recall this. Yeah, moment, so well. I'm just trying to understand it. So it's, it fits where in the motion? Yeah, motion? before, uh, maybe that Sean can explain. They said that before that the committee invite, and Ms. Blaney said that the committee write a letter to. And after that, and Mr. Surai add, if the response is not satisfactory to the members of the committee, then the NCC officials responsible be asked to appear before the committee for no more than one meeting. That's what we have in so the... Right, so, so I guess I'm unclear. We're writing a letter to who and asking for what? Because I, I don't recall this be, being ever moved. So uh, that's why yeah. I'm trying to Oh, yeah, it. exactly, exactly. But just one second. Uh, so the uh, sub amendment was adopted last time, last meeting. Sure, but I, I, I guess I'm still, in, I don't, because I don't recall this amendment. Um, I remember some amendments that there was an amendment that Mr. Casey made that was asking for a, 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 a C uh, mm -hmm. to be added to it that was asking for uh, Aaron O'Toole to appear. Uh, I remember that. I remember um, there was an amendment made about correspondence being for the Before. members of the jury. Being, this I do not recall this one. So I, I again, can you can you clarify where in the motion or where in the uh, original motion this is being placed and what the letters being written to who and asking for what? Again? Listen, just I know that we were in discussion on the report on veterans, uh, w women's veterans, but first of all, Shen Kesi can add to that. He presented the amendment on your motion, yes, I, I saying know. that the committee invite the Honorable Aaron O'Toole, yeah. former minister, yes, and also that the department provide the official report of the jury. Okay, and okay. we have two sub amendments okay. one from Ms. Blaney and the other one from. Mr. Sarai, okay. and those two amendments was adopted. So that's why I said that now we are discussing the amendment presented by yeah. Mr. Kissy yeah. and uh, so after the sub-amendment so was what adopted. Saying, what you're Thank saying you. is the amendment to invite Aaron O'Toole, and I won't read the whole thing, we'll yeah. of, we all understand. Was, now was, that's that was, what we that are was, discussing was, right now. That was passed. That, that amendment was passed, correct? And there was also an amendment that I recall uh, about uh, producing the correspondence received from the members of the jury since June of 2023. That mm -hmm. amendment was made, I believe, and I believe that one was passed as well. I could be mistaken. And then, and then now you're talking about a third amendment. From the jury. That one. Okay, so maybe that one. Maybe that one was defeated then. So I had in, I have I it, it was indicated here that uh, on my notes that that was on February the twelfth that amendment. Per, perhaps chair. If, if I could, if I could, maybe what would be easy? Because yeah. it seems like there is. I'm not the only one that appears to be confused here, from what yeah. appears yeah. in the room. Perhaps what we could ask you to do is re, is yourself or or the clerk or the analyst, whoever it is, could read us the motion as it stands, like whatever with whatever amendments have been made to it, 
and then it could indicate to us what the amendment on the floor is because I, I think there still seems to be quite a bit yeah. of confusion about what's going on here. Good, 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 good. All right. Okay, so... Pour répondre à... To answer the question asked by Mr. Richards and to also clarify what we are resuming our discussions on, let me start by reading Mr. Richards' motion as amended. And after that, I will also read the amendments that were proposed. With all the members of the committee, so we oh. have something to follow through. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah, but the clerk is going to send it to your P9, but I'm going I'm to read it too. That in relation to its study on the National Monument to Canada's mission in Afghanistan, the committee, A, invite the deputy commander of military personnel, Lieutenant Governor Lise Bougon, and B, order the production of all memoranda, briefing notes, emails, correspondence or any other records of conversations or communications, including text messages, Microsoft team messages, WhatsApp messages, signal messages, or other electronic messaging with regard to the National Monument to Canada's mission in Afghanistan transmitted since May 1st, 2014 between E, the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Office of the Minister of Veterans Affairs, the E, the Department of Canadian Heritage and the Office of the Minister of Canadian Heritage, 3E, the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Private Council Office, 4, the Department of Canadian Heritage and the Private Council Office, 5, the Privy Council Office and the Office of the Prime Minister, CIS, the Office of the Minister of Veterans Affairs and the Office of the Prime Minister, and seven, the Office of the Minister of Canadian Heritage and the Office of the Prime Minister provide that these documents shall be provided to the clerk of the committee in both official languages and without reduction within 21 days of the adoption of this motion. Et je continue. Let me continue with the amendment C. That the committee invite the Honorable Erin O'Toole former Minister of Veteran Affairs to respond to questions about the selection of Richmond landing site in 2014 for the National Monument to Canada's mission to Afghanistan and specifically why veterans were not properly consulted, D, and that the Department of Veteran Affairs Canada and the Department of Canadian Heritage provide the official report of the jury established for the selection of the firm responsible for the design of the National Monument to Canada's mission in Afghanistan. That's the motion as amended. That we are debating. 
And right now, we have the sub amendments. Okay. It now, the last amendment that was proposed is what we're debating. Adopted by adding after paragraph D the following E that the committee write a letter to the National Capital Commission NCC in regards to the role in the construction of the National Monument of Canada's mission in Afghanistan to assure the committee that the project will res the project will respect established deadlines and that Afghanistan war veterans who wish to see the monument built quickly will not experience additional delays. If the response is not satisfactory to the members of the committee, then the NCC officials responsible be asked to appear before the committee for no more than one meeting. Is that clear now? Merci. Okay, so debate. Merci. You're welcome. Mr. Kissy. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just, I just want to be clear, okay? So we've been provided with a copy of the original motion um, as amended. So the first document that we received is the original motion along with the amendments that we have adopted, right? The second document is an amendment that I put forward, um, and there were two sub-amendments proposed to that amendment. So my question is whether uh, we have completed debate and adopted those two sub-amendments. So they, they are both adopted. Right. All right. So then the debate is, is on the second page with, the, with what's in red being incorporated into it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, consultation. Okay. Would you like to intervene, Mr. Miao? Or so I I also understand that uh, MP Randeep Sarai, or PS Randeep Sarai, also put in an amendment to that. Mm -hmm. Are we discussing that piece together with what uh, uh, MP Sean Casey have proposed? Like Sean said, the. the the, the, the thing is in red, in red, that's what we are discussing. And exactly the, the intervention of Mr. Sarai, it's to discuss it. If the response is not satisfactory, so we will invite the NCC to appear before us. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's okay, or Ms. Hefner? Thank you. <coughs> Chair, I have a sub-amendment to Mr. Casey's motion, if it's appropriate at this time, I can read it out. Uh, that the letter send to the c that we send to the CCN requests the following information. A, what is the contractually prescribed building time? B, what is the currently estimated building time by the NCC architect and project manager? Three, the design is said to be more complex than usual for monuments in the NCR. What are the complexities of the design and what is the impact that they estimate it will have on the construction cost and timelines? Four, what are the steps and milestones that have been planned for this construction project? 
five, what is the current status of the project and concrete steps in construction? And six, what risks have been identified for this construction project? I think these are all really important details that if we're going to go forward with this study, we would need to uh, be aware of. Thank you. Okay, thank you. My understanding is we, we would, that your intervention, you would like to have those points be included in the, in the letter that we're going to send to the NCC, Ms. Hefner? You would like those, your intervention, you would like to have those things be included in the letter that we're going to send to NCC. That's clear? Exactly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Mr. Monsieur Saint Marie, à vous la parole. Mr. Saint Marie, thank you, Chair. I would like to thank my the honourable colleague for the, for proposing the sub amendment. Of course, I understand that that part of the amendment is trying to find out what the time limits are for implementation, and the sub amendment is talking about that. Let me reiterate what I said at the beginning of the session. If we are concerned about time limits, it may be interesting. But the position of my political party is that the objective of the motion is to shed light on the process to find out why the competition rules were not respected till the very end. Maybe that could lead to an investigation into the time limits. Well, I think that's diversion, digression for us. So as I said before, I will be against the sub-amendment for the reasons stated, and the same goes for the amendment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Mr. Richards. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to speak in favor of the sub-amendment. So first of all, the amendment as, uh, as initially uh, put forward and subsequently sub-amended um, it initially called for the National Capital Commission to appear. Then Ms. Blaney, um, I, I expect in the interest of efficiency, uh, sub-amended so that uh, we would ask for a letter as opposed to a witness. And then we subsequently agreed to a sub-amendment uh, proposed by Mr. Sarai to say if the letter wasn't good enough that we'd bring people in. Uh, to talk about this. What spurred all of this on was um, concerns, r concerns whether legitimate or not, um, over a delay in the commencement of the project. Uh, so the, the primary reason for wanting to hear from the National Capital Commission was to basically to be able to reassure veterans um, that the project uh, is on track, that there are established deadlines, and, and that those deadlines would be met. Um, I think the sub-amendment uh, keeps within the spirit of that um, original amendment, but, but adds some specificity, which I think would be welcomed by the veterans uh, uh, community to, to know um, just exactly what are the deadlines that we're looking at, um, and, and requiring some detail from the National Capital Commission, including their architect and project manager. Um, the, the third bullet uh, talks about the complexity of the project and, and something like this um, being at the upper end of the range of the level of complexity that the National Capital uh, Commission is, uh, is accustomed to dealing with. Uh, so some detail on the complexities on, and how they would impact the construction costs and timeliness. All good information to be disseminated to, uh, to veterans that are uh, obviously anxious to have this done. Um, some more detail around the steps and milestones, of course. Uh, and I think number five is particularly important. Um, in that people will want to know what is the current status of the project and the next steps in construction. My expectation is that comments uh, that meet that requirement um, would also um, be able to indicate whether and how uh, there, there have been any delays to date. Uh, our, our position has been that uh, that while it's all well and good to have this discussion here, 
um, around whether it should be Team Dau or Team Stimson, uh, the, the, proper, the proper place for those discussions to take place at this stage of the game is quite frankly in a court of law. And, uh, and given that there has been no legal action commenced, given that there has been no um, application for an interim or an interlocutory injunction, um, there is absolutely no reason that the project shouldn't be going forward and this letter should be able to provide the comfort to the community, to the public, to veterans that that is in fact the case. And finally, um, risks identified uh, for the construction project would also be uh, valuable information to give people some sense for the for the road that lies ahead. So I think it's a good amendment. It's an amendment that uh, will give the NCC uh, better marching orders for what is expected of them when they put pen to paper. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Merci, Mr. Kissy. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Kissy. Mr. Paulus. So, listening to the Liberals talk about you know wanting to assure veterans there's no delays and talking about wondering whether there's been delays, really makes me kind of say, I, gee, I, I think it's pretty obvious to everybody why nothing ever gets done when they're in government, like. To, do we really need to debate whether there's been delays or try to assure someone there hasn't been delays? Like, I mean, I don't think there's a veteran out there that would say there hasn't been a delay. Like, the, the, this mission, uh, we, we passed the 10-year anniversary of the end of it already. We, uh, this, this, this monument was announced almost 10 years ago. This government's been in power nine years. The, nothing's happened. Like, zero has happened in that entire nine years. To, to even have any doubt about whether there's been delays or try and to assure veterans that we don't want to see any further delays, I don't think is even credible at this point. Like, clearly there's a delay. And the whole point of this motion is to try to get to the bottom of why did the Prime Minister's office interfere to cause those delays? Uh, and what we're seeing in trying to deal with that to get the documents that are required in order to determine what actually happened here, which is what we're trying to do as a committee, we're seeing endless amounts of amendments and sub-amendments and uh, filibustering tactics and uh, like it's, it's, it seems like it's going to be never ending. This has gone on for months just to try to pass a simple motion to ask for some documents to try to find out what happened here. We have even had the Minister of Veterans Affairs come to this committee not that long ago and say, yeah, we'll be happy to provide the documents. So I don't really understand why the members of the Liberal members of this committee are still trying to cover up for the Prime Minister when the Veterans Affairs Minister herself is saying she'd be happy to let them provide the documents. So why don't we just, if, if they want to deal with some of these other things, um, make, a, make a separate motion because these are, these are not really all that relevant to the motion. I mean, I'd, I'm not uncomfortable at all with the idea of any of that happening. It's just what we need here is the documents to figure out why the Prime Minister's office interfered to delay this thing and let this thing get built so that veterans can finally have what they deserve for the mission that they served in. And so why don't we just pass the motion, get the documents dealt with, and if there's other things that they want to study related to the monument, we can always deal with that. But this has gone on for months, and veterans are sick and tired of it, Chair. So let's get on with it and get the vote done and get these documents produced. <laughs> Monsieur Paulus, vous avez... Mr. Paulus, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. For months and months, uh, I was. I remember being here at the beginning when this motion was brought forward when we were talking about Afghanistan. And every time veterans are being used, we always hear that it's all about veterans. We need to move forward for, for the sake of veterans. But right now, what we're doing is actually tarnishing the memory of veterans because we are seeing clearly that there was political interference on this file. Otherwise, there would have been no filibustering by the Liberals at the beginning. I was surprised two weeks ago seeing the minister, seeing that the Minister of Veteran Affairs is open to providing information. As my colleague said, why are we talking about adding deadlines, as Mr. Casey said, and at the same time talking about issues that should be settled in court? Is there political interference? Is there any criminal action? I don't know if there's any civil case that is violating the civil code, for example. Was there any action or any act committed that requires 
the government to do all it needs to do to get itself out of the situation. Veterans want the monument in memory of the mission in Afghanistan. This monument represents, in quotes, political decisions. So what is the attachment that you will have to a monument when all you can think about is, it are the political decisions taken by the liberal government. And they are talking about a, a trash uh, survey that was done, and it has been demonstrated that it wasn't serious. We all know that this is a political decision. As my colleague, Mr. Richard, said, the basic motion is simple. The Minister of Veteran Affairs has accepted to do his part. Now it takes it's up to the others, Privy Council Office and the others, to do their part. There's nothing to hide. If there's nothing to hide, it should be simple. But it, that's why, together with our colleagues from the block, I believe the NDP is also on our side. We should be, we should not, we should not be using the veterans as a pretext. Thank you, Mr. Polus. Now, Mr. Brian May, you have the floor, and after that, Ms. Hefner. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you kindly, Mr. Chair. Um, <sighs> Not entirely sure where to start with all of that. Uh, this, this first and foremost, this process that we're undergoing right now uh, is committee business. Uh, I think it needs to be stated that uh, this should be this should be in camera, so we can have this conversation. That we can hammer these things out. I think it's incredibly inappropriate that we're doing this uh, not in camera, but but uh, the the committee has spoken. That said, um, Mr. Richards talked about the time and the delay uh, of this monument. And, and I, I don't think, I think if you, you reached across the floor and you asked uh, that we would disagree that this, is, uh, this, this um, monument has taken far, far too long uh, to be completed. Um, but I think it's very disingenuous uh, to, suggest that, uh, to suggest that this is entirely... Uh, this current government that is that has caused this delay, uh, Mr. Richards, well knows well that uh, the original point of order, Chair. Sorry, I can't flawed. hear Mr. May because the conservatives across the way are having so much fun giggling and making fun and talking over everyone else. It's really loud in this room, guys. Have some respect. Have some civility, please. Thank you. Thank you. Please keep it quiet and. Uh, Let's go back I, to Mr. Me. We have to. We want to listen to Mr. Me. Please go ahead, Mr. Me. Thank you. I, I thank uh, my my honourable colleague for that intervention. To be honest, uh, the advantage of being virtual is I don't have to hear that nonsense. So, uh, thank you, uh, thank you. It didn't disrupt me one little bit. Um, but I, I think it's important to to get back to the facts. Uh, and the fact is that that when we were elected, uh, this plan was was flawed. Uh, it was had to be started all over again. Uh, this chosen location was flawed, and I, I I don't think that anybody disagrees with that. I think that that I, I've not heard uh, conservatives stand up and say, "Hey, we should have built it where where we we said." I think I think everybody agrees that 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 process was was flawed it was a mistake uh, and we needed to we needed to start over um, but this has become a, uh, a, a a challenge in terms of uh, our time on this committee uh, I've said this a number of times uh, publicly that the mission mission creep on this study uh, is is significant uh, we we met with uh, we've had now several meetings on this. We even brought in uh, Dayu to to discuss their their side of this. Um, and and look, the the opposition didn't get uh, didn't get the 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 the, the um, scandal that they they wanted to find, and so they're digging. They're they're trying to dig deeper. Uh, and I think it incredibly inappropriate to accuse us on, on the government side of using veterans uh, as a pretext when that's exactly what the Conservatives are doing right now and uh, continue to do. 
uh, we, we know that this is happening, uh, this kind of tactic uh, to, to delay any kind of feasible study uh, is happening across, across committees. And, and I, again, I want to point out, um, you know, Mr. Richard's hypocrisy uh, in his statement just now, when in fact, as we speak, he is, he is promoting a petition for to take us all the way back to the beginning of this process and start over. And I think it's important to recognize the, the, the sub-amendment and the amendment that, that Mr. Casey has put forward is to, is to ensure that we can demonstrate, that the government can demonstrate, that Veterans Affairs and, and Commemoration can demonstrate that all this political nonsense that's happening in this committee right now and has been for months is not impacting the actual construction of this, of this monument. That's the point. When we're talking about wanting to bring assurances to veterans, that's what we're talking about. And, and for Mr. Richards to sit here and suggest that nothing has happened, that nothing is happening, shows why we need to bring those officials in. And, and Mr. Casey's original motion was to have them stand as witnesses to answer his questions. That was, that was uh, amended to a letter, which will hopefully answer, answer uh, the questions that this committee has. Um, but it, but I, I think we really need to, to, to look hard and, and fast at, at, at what really is important to veterans right now. Uh, I've met with dozens of veterans just in the last week to talk about a number of different issues, and not one talked about this monument and talked about the delays in this monument. Uh, we know that there are really big uh, issues. Uh, I have two motions, one that's been agreed upon by this committee, and I'm not sure we're ever going to actually get to it at this at this rate. Um, but I've tabled another motion that I'd like to discuss at this committee that actually impacts veterans in real time and, and, and their career after the military. Um, you would think that uh, you know, members of this committee would want to talk about those issues, would want to try to find options and solutions for those issues. Um, but instead, we are going to, uh, you know, continue to rehash something that we've already talked about, that we've already met about, we've already brought the minister in to talk to, we've already brought officials in to talk to, um, and and continue to to waste the time of this committee. And look, I appreciated the the... Uh, pause uh, that was offered to to get us through the women's study. I want to acknowledge that the conservatives uh, 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 paused this to allow us to move that forward, and I, I want to thank them publicly for us for the ability to do that. Um, it doesn't it doesn't change the fact that 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 we have a laundry list of motions to tackle on this committee uh, that that uh, that deserve our attention. Uh, and 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 require um, urgency uh, on on our on our behalf if we're going to bring recommendations forward for the government to consider. If we don't con if we don't think any of those motions that that we've already voted in favor of on this committee are worth discussing, um, so be it. Uh, if we think this is the biggest issue for veterans out there right now, so be it. I personally do not think that's the case, and I and I'm quite certain that veterans would agree. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Brian May. And now let's go to Ms. Hefner. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. I also wanted to point out the hypocrisy in the statements we heard from Mr. Richards a moment ago. I mean, first of all, he's always trying to take the floor away from everybody else who has it. If he's speaking, he wants to make sure everyone is paying close attention to what he's saying. But otherwise, he wants to make sure that his voice is always heard. And so, <clears throat> Chair, do I have the floor? Oh, yes. OK, yes. thank you. And so what we heard from Mr. Richards, who's still having a conversation on the other side, is that it's the prime minister's fault that we had a delay in this Afghan monument. But in fact, as we've already heard today, it was the conservatives that 
initially chose the wrong spot for this monument. The veterans were enraged with the location that conservatives decided to put this monument 10 years ago. You couldn't walk there in the spring, in the winter, it was flooded in the spring. And now he wants to take us back to the beginning of the process and start it all over again. Mr. Richards is really enjoying this laughing and talking to his friends while we're trying to have a conversation, but really, it shows. I mean, there's no delay to the monument while we have these conversations. Just because there's a delay at the committee to get documents that you want to unearth doesn't mean there's a delay in actually building the monument for veterans, which is what veterans really want. I mean, is the prime minister, the, we've heard the conservatives say the prime minister was responsible for starting the fires in BC. He's responsible for global inflation. He's responsible for the delay in this monument. It's a witch hunt. It's a witch hunt. It's not creating the delay in building this monument. The delay was caused when the conservatives didn't consult with veterans before they decided where they were going to build this monument. The monument is getting built. Veterans should be assured of that. And I was a recent addition to this committee, and I have to say I was blown away by the Women Veterans Study. I want to thank MP Blaney for bringing that forward. I, was, I learned so much from that study. I think uh, the public will want to read that study to understand what's in that. This committee can accomplish really good work, but right now it's just partisan games. We're not doing anything to build the monument by completing this study, the monument's getting built. It's just a witch hunt. This is supposed to be a planning meeting. It's supposed to be in camera so we can set out what our next study is going to be. I believe Ms. Blaney has another great idea uh, for a study that we can follow. The experience of veterans, I, I can't remember exactly what it was. Why don't we get onto that? Get onto that page. Why are we rehashing old stuff that's not having any effect on veterans today? We should be trying to make a difference for veterans today. We should be trying to improve their lives. We should be making sure that they get health care, for example, when they leave the service. Um, so anyway, this is just partisan games, and I hope people who are watching understand that. It's not causing any delay in this monument. We believe this monument uh, should be built quickly, and properly, and uh, that's going to happen regardless of what happens at this committee. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Ms. Hefner. And uh, now let's start with Mr. Miao and then Mr. Polus. Mr. Miao. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, you know, coming back to this motion and amendment, I have to say, like, uh, before some of the new member had joined this committee, I think we're all at the War Museum to celebrate uh, and congratulate Team Stimson on the design that they proposed. And I think we all had a great time at that opening uh, ceremony at the War Museum. Uh, some of us actually walk across the street to where the potential monument will be built. And uh, listening to the opposition saying that uh, we are trying to delay this process, I hope that this motion doesn't go through for the fact that, you know, it's, it, the construction process is still ongoing. And listening to some of the veterans I have met uh, through this opportunity as a, uh, a member to this committee, a lot of the Afghan veterans have stated that they don't want to wait any longer. And if we are going to go back and to fight against, you know, which team has a better design, I think we have heard it clearly uh, from our veterans that they feel that the, the Team Stimson design best reflect uh, the, the, the Afghan war that um, had happened to them. And it's interesting to hear also how, you know, some of us don't want to delay this process but it is still ongoing, and I think it is important to continue to carry the work out um, without going back. I do understand that there was already 
a study on the Afghan monument previously. Uh, minister was also presented here in the committee to speak about that. And uh, as much as we can go back and forth on this, I think it's important to really listen to our veterans and be that representation and take on that responsibility as uh, standing uh, committee members in this uh, standing committee to really interpret the will willingness of, of what the veterans want. And as much as there are other conflicts that's happening around the world right now, I think it's important for us to reflect that we don't want to see, you know, these conflict happening. And it's unfortunate at the same time that we are trying to get this monument built. And now that we have an, a, a location set, a design set, and, and if there are any consequences to what the jury have decided, I think that will go into a legal process like my colleague uh, MP Sean Casey have mentioned earlier. And it's, it's really important that we should move on and continue to represent the veterans that we, sh we are representing and to reflect on what is more important than going back and forth with the partisanship game. So um, I think with this amendment, uh, going back to it, it's important that we get the full answer, uh, of course, but without disrupting the, the current process of the construction because it's important that we can see this built soon. Uh, with that, I think, uh, Chair, I would think it's important that we also um, continue to, to listen to the voice of our veterans and making sure that there's no certain blames that we're making to our government to uh, delay this whole process. So that's all. I'd like to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miao. And maintenant, Mr. Paulus. Mr. Paulus, you have the floor now. Thank you, Chair. I've been listening to my liberal colleagues who are trying to justify all that they're doing now. And I listened to Mr. Mio say that he has met uh, several veterans and many of them are talking about the monument. It's a priority. Now, from what he's saying, it is justifying why there's a pause because we've detected political interference before it's too late. So everything that's happening now is confirming that there is indeed political interference in, a, in an official process. It's the first time that there's a process with jurists, experts who did a job, made a choice, made a pro pro proposal, and then that decision was changed by political decision. And that's why the motion is simple. We want explanations. We want to know official justifications for the political decision. There was a violation of a government process witnesses who appeared here confirmed that. Now, you're tr trying to play with the 2014 choice. That was a political decision taken by the, to by the time Mr. Otoo, who was a minister, said this should not be done, but there were challenges. And that's why there's a process, an official process was put in place to choose the monument. And that is why we had to refer to those people and not try to interfere political Politically, So what led to that political decision to interfere in the process? That undermines all government decisions in the coming years, be it for monuments or other government projects. Every time there's political interference, people will not like to be it. People will not like to invest money in those programs because they'll be saying, well, what's the purpose? Because there's going to be a political decision to interfere in the work done by professionals and professionals who no longer want to interfere or deal with that because they'll see people will interfere politically and say whatever. So people should stop saying we want to delay the project. 
the work has not started. There's been a, a violation and interference in the process. We just want that to be settled. We want to see the documents, and after that, we can decide whether or not we are moving forward or stopping and going back to the basic decision. But if it continues this way and there's no change, all what Mr. Casey will be is saying is that they will go to court and take court action. So you'll be telling people who want to go to court and fight the government of Canada that has violated a government process. Do you think it makes sense to have to fight against the federal government for their rights to be respected? Whereas here we have the opportunity to find out what happened. That is all we're asking for. Let's stop using excuses. Let's stop joking. Let's vote on the motion. Let's receive the documents. And after that, we may proceed. And the memory of the 158 soldiers who died in Afghanistan will be protected. Thank you. Good to Ms. Blaney. You have the floor. Well, thank you, Chair. And I have to say that I am feeling concerned. It does feel like we're sticking on this issue and the debate just keeps happening and happening. I think um, I just want to just put on the record that I'm concerned because I, I do feel quite passionately. There's one study in particular um, that I really want to get to on the Persian Gulf uh, veterans. I think that some of their challenges are top of mind for me. and and growing more concerning. So I'm encouraging everyone, if we could just get to a place that we can get through this and get to the other side. I do agree the process, and I don't want to focus again on who is doing the monument. The, the problem for me, and I think I've been consistent in this, is that the process wasn't clear. There was no verification uh, in the process to make sure that the people who are responding were veterans. Um, my VAC account is not the best way to connect with veterans. I think that's been said in this uh, committee numerous times. Um, so there, there's something there that really concerns me. I, I, I'm not interested. I, I appreciate uh, what um, Mr. Casey said, like, I don't think that we should be adjudicating it in our place. It is not our job in committee to do that. Our job, I think, is to look at process and figure out how we can fix process moving forward. So to me, that's the, the heart of the issue. So I guess what I, I hope we can get to a place that we can move forward. And if we can't, then I'm going to have to have some serious inner dialogue uh, because I am the one representative of my caucus here about what's more important to veterans, you know, figuring this out and re hoping to see a commitment to fix a process that is obviously flawed and concerning, or is it working on things that really matter to veterans like the Persian Gulf veterans? So I, I want to just put on the record that I'm in that place of indecisiveness, so encouraging everybody if we could please um, put down the games and just get to the point where we find a way to work together to uh, redirect the process. I think having a debate about what government was better for veterans is kind of pointless. We've seen terrible things on all sides in this place. Um, so if I could just encourage that we could get there, and if not, I think that we need to adjourn this debate and move on to what's next, because we're obviously not getting anywhere. Um, and maybe examine other ways that we can do that. So I'm not moving that. I just want to be clear. But I, I think we need to discuss this because how many committees have we spent doing this? It's, it's just getting too long. And I'm disappointed on both sides because it feels like the Liberals aren't saying, yeah, the process is flawed. There should be a better process. Here's our commitment to make a better process. It's, it's, it's like they're saying we didn't do anything wrong and we don't want to talk about it anymore. And, and I think there was something wrong with that process. It wasn't a clear process. And it left us in a position where we were made to feel as a committee that we had to choose a side. And we should be able to say, this is the process, the process was clearly followed, and move on. And we couldn't say that in this situation. So let's get somewhere, please. Thank you, Ms. Blenet. And uh, on the list, I have uh, Mr. St. Marie and Mr. May. But just before, I'd like to, when we're going to adjourn a little bit later, just to tell you that uh, 
for our agenda, we have to discuss what we're going to do next week and week after because we still have six uh, study pending and more than 30 motions to discuss. So having that in mind before uh, we adjourn, Monsieur Sainte-Marie, la parole est à vous. Oui, merci. Thank you, Chair. Yes, the firm could take court action against the government if it so desires. But let me remind members of the committee that the role of elected officials in committees is to cross-check or verify the work of the government. Here, we have a situation that seems to be very disturbing. We have a process that was in place, a jury that presents a report, selects a firm, and then the government overturns all that with a survey that apparently wasn't very scientific or objective. So that raises lots of questions. The role of elected officials is to shed light on such situations. Yes, there could be legal action by private citizens, but the role of a committee like this one is to find out what happened. Was the government worthy? Was it up to the task? The reasons it has given elected officials, are those reasons valid? So we are to find out whether the government was worthy, was the process followed. So the decisions of the process were not respected. So there are lots of questions about that. Hence the motion that I support. We've talked about partisanship, but in my opinion, the partisanship is here in, that we see here is a government that has chosen not to respect the official report submitted by the jury. So this is a fundamental issue, even though there seems to be no consensus around the table about that. Elected officials on the government party side want to defend the government in my opinion, elected officials should still be able to study the issue. As my colleague, Mr. Polus, said, we should not have such situations repeat themselves because we are not a banana republic here where the government nullifies an entire process. We must respect partners that take time and, eff and put in effort in the process, so it has to do with the government respecting its word. That is crucial. I agree with Ms. Madam Blaney, who says that there are lots of other topics that are very important. We know the difficulties that veterans are facing. There's a lot of work to be done. So I hope that we are able to move on to other studies that are very disturbing without minimizing what we have to do here. We need to find out why the government did not respect the process. Why did it, why did it not show itself worthy towards its partners? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Saint-Marie. Mr. Brian May on Zoom. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, and I wanna thank um, MP Blaney for, for her intervention. Uh, and uh, understanding her frustration as well, I share it. Um, I, I do want to go back to to what the conservatives just said, though, uh, regarding uh, we'll just pass this, and then it will be done. Well, that's what was said in November, and we did. Uh, we passed uh, our colleague, uh, Monsieur Desilets' motion. We produced the documents. We had the minister here. We had uh, we expanded that. Remember, it was only going to be the one meeting, and then we expanded it, and we brought in Dayu, and and now we have a conservative motion to do what the same, this, essentially the same thing. Uh, this this is why I do not support this motion um, because this is no longer about veterans. This is no longer even about the monument. Uh, as my colleague, uh, Mrs. Hefner, MP Hefner, mentioned, is this is this is becoming more of a political 
uh, witch hunt. So I, I won't drag this out. I just wanted to point out that uh, for those colleagues that may not have been around this table at that time, um, that those documents were produced. And the clerk can correct me, but I believe near the end of November uh, that, that, or sorry, at the beginning of November, that motion was passed. By the end of November, those documents were produced. Um, there was nothing indicating uh, any involvement uh, by the Prime Minister's office. Uh, and, and the opposition aren't happy with that. They wanted there to be a scandal that they could stick to the Prime Minister. That didn't happen. That's why we are here today. Um, I really do hope we can adjourn uh, this, uh, this debate, move on to more productive, uh, more substantial for veterans uh, issues. Um, and uh, I, I, I think... I think we got to we got to we got to put this one to bed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Me, and now Mr. Sean Kesey, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think that Ms. Blaney has offered a, an olive branch that I'd like to explore a little more. Um, what I heard Ms. Blaney say is that she's um, she's concerned about process. And that's entirely valid. Um, and if there could be a discussion on process and how the process could be and should be improved, I think that's a discussion worth having. She also said that we, we need to um, dispense with the, the political games. Well, the last intervention from uh, Mr. Richards started with, we need to find out why the PMO interfered. And so that's what this is really about. Mm -hmm. And then he said, it's a simple request, a simple request to send uh, bureaucrats all over government combing through 10 years of documents to find every single text message, Microsoft Teams message, WhatsApp message, Signal message, any other electronic message between multiple departments without regard to cabinet confidentiality, without regard to um, solicitor client privilege. This in its present form isn't about process. This is a fishing expedition with the, that supports an obsession with attacking the Prime Minister. So, so that's what this has descended into. I'm entirely in agreement with Ms. Blaney that it would be appropriate for this committee to have a look at the process and suggest improvements. It is not appropriate for this committee to spend all kinds of resources having people combing through documents and computer records dating back 10 years to see if we can stick it to the Prime Minister. And that's what this is about. And, I mean, and, uh, look, this is, this, is a, this is a bit about the, the boy who cried wolf. So this is, this is about the person who had multiple cases of veterans who were counseled to avail themselves of medical assistance in dying, but there was, not, there was not, nothing established before the committee except for the cases, the, 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 the two cases acknowledged by the department. This is, this is the boy who cried wolf when he said that the prime minister has outlawed prayer, and that fizzled. So here we are again. So the latest fishing expedition is to pin on the prime minister uh, something that is, quite frankly, doing a disservice to veterans. What would do a service to veterans would be to have something as focused as what Ms. Blaney has suggested. I think that's an appropriate uh, role for the committee to undertake. Um, and the minute, we can, the minute we can get back to that, we can move on. Let's, let's take this out of the political smear and move it to the best interest of veterans. And, and then I think we're, and then I think we're, we're, uh, we're, we're doing what's expected of us. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm sure you'd have agreement on this side of the table. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you very much. Monsieur Paulus. I just want to make a reminder. In the official notes, it said that the consecutive motion was asking for documents from the 8th of November 2021. So when it was tabled, it was two years. So it's not true that we're asking officials to bring 10 years worth of documents. It's because of the amendments that we went up to 2014. And we had to consider the bidding process. Thank you. Thank you. Any other interventions? As I said, we would like to know the clerk and the analyst and myself would like to know what we'll do next week considering the studies we have and the motion. Interventions, can we not call the question? No, c'est ça que je veux m'assurer. That's what I wanted to make sure about. If we don't have any other interventions, we'll move on to the vote. First of all, we'll be voting on the sub amendments. I say that for now, there's no intervention. When I say we'll be voting on the sub amendment, the sub amendment that is on the table is the sub amendment by Ms. Hefner who requested that we add a certain number of conditions in the letter that will be sent to NCC. We need to understand what we're voting on. Ça va? Donc, nous... So we will be voting on the sub amendment proposed by Ms. Hefner. Who are those for? Who are those against the sub amendment? So I'll be asking the clerk to proceed with the vote. En favor. Ms. Hefner. En Mr. May. Mr. May. Yes. Mr. Miao. In favor. Ms. Damoff. Yes. Mr. Dodo. Against. Pardon? Against. That's no. Mr. Richards. Oppose. Monsieur Polis. No. Mr. Kitchen. No. Monsieur Saint Marie. Contre. Miss Blaney. Four. Four. Yes, six. Nays, five. Alors, le. So the sub amendment proposed by Miss Hefner has been adopted. Yeah, well, exactly. Now we have to go back on the motion of Mr. Kissy because can we, can we there the was question? an amendment on that, so. Okay, I ask we call the question. Est-ce que sur... On the amendment, Any interventions? Otherwise, we'll proceed to the vote. Mr. Clark, please move on to vote. En favor. Ms. Efner. En favor. Mr. May. Yes. Mr. Miao. In favor. Uh, Ms. Damoff? Yes. Mr. Dodo? Opposed. Mr. Richards? Opposed. Mr. Polis? No. Uh, Mr. Kitchen? No. Mr. Saint Marie? Contre. Ms. Blaney? Four. It's a letter. Yes, six. Nays, five. Voilà. Alors. So the amendment proposed by Mr. Casey, a sub amendment, has been adopted. 
Let me serve now. Have another amendment to the main motion that I think would be helpful to help us cooperate, although it looks like Mr. Richards doesn't want to cooperate with other people around the table. Um, <clears throat> if I will continue. Excuse me, Ms. Efner. It's 6.30, but I have to ask 